today we're going to fix up a Coleman Versa trailer. I've fixed up at least 100, 150, maybe even 200 trailers over the years, and this one needs everything. Now, if you don't know what these are, these Versa trailers sold by Coleman in the 70s, 80s, stuff like that, they're actually pretty sought after, but they do a lot more than just a typical little mini trailer. That's the front tailgate folds down, the rear tailgate folds down, it also tilts, and they used to, they came with dome over the top so you can keep all your camping stuff or whatever dry but people took those off because you can't load that much stuff in them this one needs tires the tongue's broken needs all wheel all, all wiring done on it um bearings gone through the tailgate has broken off we need some welding on it you know this little teeny trailer needs absolutely everything so thought i'd bring you guys along and let's do it my right, ginger Bang feels good. That one's dry. Been sitting in the weeds a little while. Grease doesn't look bad. That nut feels too tight though. Yeah, somebody tighten that nut too tight. That is one of the most common things I see on trailers while bearings fail, is because people want to actually tighten that, your bearing nut. You actually, you're better off to have that thing half a turn too loose than you are too tight because you just smash those bearings. See that one right there? It's, it should have been backed up a quarter, one one whole notch. You can have wobble in there, that's better than having like tightness because once those bearings heat up, they expand and if they have nowhere to go, they just eat, they just eat themselves. I'm trying to see which bearing made the noise. The inner bearing, got a little bit of water on it, looks like. I'll show you how to tell whether or not a bearing's bad. And you should replace it or you just rerun it. Because a lot of times these super duper cheap Chinese bearings that you get everywhere are, um, are worse off than the uh, old bearings you pulled off. Well, I can tell you this bearing's bad instantly, but I'll show you other ways. That's a bad bearing, no bad doubt about it with that pitting. But how do you tell, like the outer bearing looks just fine, didn't have any water on it? Look at the race. If the race has any marks on it, lines, from where those bearings are sitting, you need to replace it. That looks pristine. This bearing is still, the outer bearing is excellent. The inner bearing, wipe that away. The grease is wiped away, you can see the discoloration on the race. I hope you can. Um, and you can see lines where the bearing was just sitting, that bearing is going to fail. You know, even if the, I didn't have pitting, that bearing would fail. So on this particular one, this outer bearing that didn't get, have any water in it, the race looks beautiful, the bearing looks beautiful, it's a Timken. Um, I'm going to reuse this one because I guarantee this bearing is better than the cheap Amazon, you know, $5 bearing I can buy. So I'm going to rerun this outer bearing, but I'm going to replace the inner bearing and race. We have the right side bearing in stock. So, and we actually even have a seal, so we're going to replace that inner seal. If you don't know how to get the races out, usually you take a screwdriver, but everybody would freak out on me if I used a screwdriver. Don't get rid of that yet. You need that. And that is your hammer surface. Now, don't keep hammering this in because you get it stuck that way. You know, this way it sits flat, this way is rounded. Um, so once I get it closed, you'll see. That's when you flip it around. Now we're in, we're seated. 
Now I can just take this and we should be, I mean, it's barely in there. New race is in. Make sure everything's cleaned up. Put the bearing in, then put the seal on. Don't put the seal on and then the bearing because you can't get the bearing in when the seal's on. You get it, but we'll pack it first. How to tighten a wheel nut, your bearing nut. Stop over tightening them. Serious, you have two tapered races in there that have surfaces. You could actually leave it that loose and you're not gonna burn out and throw out a bearing and melt your melt your entire spindle and everything else. When you melt it is when people tighten it, okay? So I got a finger tightened here, but I have freshly packed bearings. So I do have to tighten it just a little bit more as I spin it. And all that's doing is I'm smashing the grease out between the rollers. That's it. I'm going to loosen it off, way loose, smash out the grease. That's where people would normally tighten it. Oh yeah, I can barely turn it, no. So I'm going to back it off probably about half to quarter turn. Then with my finger, that is the, that's a spot right there for the cotter pin, All right? Yep. I cannot get it to the next one with my finger. Nope, I'm staying back here. Yes, I am. And this bearing will never fail. See that? See how loose that bolt is? You see that wiggling? Completely fine. That gives this bearing, when you got this loaded up and it gets hot or warm, it will expand and it'll fill up that space. If you give it no space to fill up, it'll just disintegrate itself and you'll be on the side of the freeway looking like an idiot. The first time you take it out, drive it 20 miles, loaded, get out, touch this thing. If it is slightly warm to your hand, it's gonna burn up. If it is cold to the touch, you're good. Did you tree a squirrel? Huh? This sound side sounds flawless, but take the cap off. The grease actually looks brand new. But look at that. That's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want. Just the teeniest amount of play. So whoever did this side already did a perfect job. So I actually bought tires for this that I was just gonna swap onto the rims, you know, cause tires are only, I think I paid 20 bucks a piece for them. But they came, and I'll show you right here, but they came in different sizes, which was uh, rather irritating. Same brand, same style of tread, same size. Everything is exactly the same. All the numbers on the side are the exact same. But one tire is actually about three quarters to an inch smaller than the other. Uh, there, you can see how much taller it is. What the devil? Yeah, only difference is this one was made in 19th week of 2022 and the other one was made in 2021. That's the only difference, a year apart. So some pencil pusher decided to ask, hey, how can we make these tires 10 cents cheaper? And the answer was, use less rubber. And that makes them just a little bit smaller. So I think I gotta send one of these back. I can't have one that is an inch smaller. It's craziness. So after back and forth for nearly a month, I ended up just buying pre-mounted ones that apparently have a nice chip on the rim. Need to be touched up anyway. Yep, and the rims only mount one way, but that's one of the nice things about trailers is even if you don't have a tire machine or something else you can just buy the entire rim assemblies you can see this hole right here about what it's supposed to look like and you can see this one's ripped out and no longer there and the same thing on the other side you can't really see but it's missing its little piece there too hey you let the squirrel get away why'd you do that now it's gonna tease you make fun of you 
amateur letting squirrels get away find another one Line it up, burning the bottom. Cut it off. Fit it in. Weld it up. This pin's binding. The other side seems fine, so there might be something wrong with the alignment, I think, of this. I think the tailgate itself has a bend to it. I actually came back and I added another layer of that rod. So this is twice as thick this way now. Same thickness this way, but twice as thick this way. Um, so it'll be less likely to blow out. So you can see it was already clearanced a little bit. I had to, this groove was already here. I just moved it up a quarter inch. That groove has to be there for when it comes down. So now that groove is just a little bit higher. No big deal. Now it moves and functions a lot better and it's twice as strong. These are little locks. You flip around. You have little wing nuts, but. Just like a truck tailgate. We're gonna divert our attention to the trailer tongue now. And the coupler, this is what it came with. This was actually sitting back in the trailer. So I knew that I was missing. So I just picked up another one of these. I looked this over carefully. It's not damaged or dinged and it doesn't feel like it's worn out at all. So there's no reason to replace the entire thing. You just pick this up. They're really cheap. And we can slide this entire assembly in. Yeah. There we go. This is a teeniest. So this is actually a tilt deck trailer. So this has to be hinged. So generally with a trailer, you'd run the wiring just back the center post. But for this one, we have to run it through the center post out here and then it can move around. Have the old wiring here and have some of my new wiring attached. This is just 16 gauge wire. There's actually two in each strand right here. Um, but then it's, you know, then it has this casing over it that makes it more abrasion resistant that I like. This is just what I have on hand. Uh, another awesome thing to use is actually like extension cord. Like extension cord has a nice shield on it. Usually it's waterproof. Actually works really good for trailer wiring and it's better than like, you know, you go buy that Harbor Freight kit or something with trailer wiring and it comes with a stranded wire. The problem with that, that wire is as soon as it's six months old, a year old, you bend it like this and it'll just crack and the wire will be exposed. Moisture gets in there, corrodes it, and then it no longer works. So I may use lights like these. These came off of um, trucks that didn't have any bed on them. They, they turn into like ambulances and stuff else like that. I have a whole bunch of tail lights in there. And this is all tail lights. This is mainly, I got like a million backup lights in there. But I mean, there's lights, lights. Um, some of them I've kind of picked over, but there's what, like eight boxes inside this box. So they're sorted by different type. These are usually just trailer or semi truck lights but I'll find what I need. Power unit. It's a Jaws of Life. Yep, both those boxes right there, Jaws of Life. Somebody asked me the other day if I still had them. Yep, I do. Okay, trailer wiring. See these things? These quick crimps? If you put one of these on your trailer, 
you're just asking for trouble and you just waste your time. Six months, a year, two years, they will fail and ruin both wires. Okay, just got the wires twisted together using some solder, some electrical solder, rosin core, and that to be perfect. The solder joint should look shiny. That's it, shiny. Should not look dull. If it would look dull, you had a cold joint. Okay, I take it, do it always like that, fold it in half. If you want it to last, this is dielectric grease. This prevents moisture. This is just essentially silicone grease. You can also use Vaseline, but it prevents moisture from tracking down and corroding the copper and ruining the connection. So we'll take the heat shrink, put that over. So tip number two, so the light bulb has the positive wire that's wired in and the negative just grounds to the frame. Problem with that is the negative always fails. So we just take a small jumper and we just coat it in a little dielectric. I don't have the screws all the way mounted down. I'm going to, you could put ring terminals and stuff on it, really not necessary. I'm just gonna jam that down the side of the screw. Kind of wrap it around the screw, it doesn't really matter. Come on. It doesn't have to be pretty because it's just ground. I got it pinched in there, that's it. Now that would be the ground, that's exactly how it was, but I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna share off of this ground over here. So this screw is also grounding. That's it. Couldn't be prettier, doesn't need to be. That's it. This is twice as likely not to fail. So another little tip, increase your grounds. It was no extra effort to do that while I was mounting it. There you go, all wired up. Every joint is soldered. They're not a single butt connector. This thing will last. That wiring will last a long time. Lights mounted. Tail lights mounted on the side. Let's flip it over. Test it out. Driving lights. This should be left turn. Right turn. Brakes. So brakes driving so just playing around if you don't know these lights um, like this they actually have a clear bottom so that it illuminates a license plate so both sides that side's not on right now actually illuminate down below and I don't know if you can read the sidewalk right now but it says Coleman yep I just took a like a paint pen and I wrote on the inside of there and the closer it gets the the more in focus it gets just playing around, had to go back and bolt them up a little bit. But yeah, it looks all blurry. Thought, hey, kind of like the new cars and stuff that have it come out of the mirror. Look at that little Easter egg. Maybe somebody will find it one day when they're walking by like, does that say Coleman? It's missing one key thing and that is the fenders that used to be on there. Probably they got ripped off. Um, little trailer like this is a pain in the butt to back and so somebody probably backed in and ripped off the fenders along with the lights. So. You can kind of see the outline in the right light. They were just, let's see if the, I think the other side actually shows up better. There you guys go. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but you can see the outline. So I measure that out. And so I'm just gonna bend up some fenders real fast. Shouldn't be hard and put it on there. Cause I think it looks a little weird without having fenders on there. So we've got a scrap piece still. This is actually the old side of a furnace. Actually they, Come with the commercial furnaces come with actually really nice sheet metal so I take those off yeah they have some holes but you just work around it so let's plasma cut that out real fast and bend those into fenders so i got it all cut out of the bigger sheet um I, it's about 16 gauge so i need to bend it like this but then i also need the edges to bend over so it's just not a flat piece of steel so it has structural strength um so what i did is um i want one inch to bend up and three quarters inch to bend up on this side, on the outside. And so I scored that line right there. I just took my angle grinder and I ran it down about four times, which I think is about half the thickness of the steel. And so that'll allow me to fold up these two outsides nice and crisp. And then I can um, do a thinner, I don't, I'm not gonna go halfway through, I'm probably gonna do 
you know, where this one I did about halfway through, this one I'm going to do maybe just one little score, and that'll give a little bit more of a round bend. If you go through about three quarters away, it'll give a really sharp bend, but then you lose some strength a little bit. But I should be able to just grab this and bend it with pliers or anything else. And that's how you make bends without a sheet metal bender. I gotta cut these little pies out so it can go in there. So we'll cut those out real fast. Now this should just fold right up, fold right up. Don't look half bad. And they should be, I bet you they support my weight. Yep. So, you can even step on them. Gotta put on some chains. So, I opened up the link, crimped it around. Now I just need to weld it back closed. Can you fit a sheet of plywood though? A piece of sheetrock. 49 inches. Eight foot. Yep. Get a whole stack of plywood, something in there. Got a lawnmower. Probably four lawnmowers. Speed. Sixty miles an hour. Nothing. Toes great. Come on. Get in there. The very end parking spot. Can we do it? Can we do it? She actually has really good manners. If you guys have never towed with a little car, I actually put a hitch on this thing 10, 15 years ago, and I was actually blown away how well they actually tow. Something like this trailer, it doesn't even feel, I mean, we got 800 pounds here, with the trailer, little four-wheeler, and it doesn't even feel it. You can't even tell that you have it behind you. Um, stops great. It's impressive what a little car can do, so don't let not having a pickup truck not talk you into getting a little trailer and towing just like a truck. Ready for a ride of your life? You ready for this? No, come on, get in. Okay, stay, 
<laughs> no. Get in. Get in. Stay. 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 We're going to do this. Nope. You don't trust me? What do you mean you don't trust me? Come on. Come on. Get in. Go right on the four wheeler. You want to get on the four wheeler? Okay, get on the four wheeler. Let's go for a ride on the four wheeler. Come on. You want to get on that one? <laughs>